Good morning, and welcome to our liturgy for Thursday of the second week of Easter. During this Easter season, we continue to rejoice in the risen Lord and embrace his merciful love for us. Our presider today is Father Ethan. Please stand and join us in singing our gathering song, The Summons. Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God the Father, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. So welcome back. I hope everyone had a nice Easter vacation. Did you? Yeah? Are you excited to be back? Yeah? It's kind of mixed, huh? While we're here, uh, we still are celebrating Easter in this Easter season, and we do thank God for all the gifts that he gives us, especially the gift of the resurrection. So Jesus is giving us a new life. It's not just our old way, but he's giving us a whole new way of being and living with him and with each other. Uh, but we're mindful, though, that even though Jesus gives us this great gift, sometimes we don't always open the gift. So for the times that maybe we haven't opened the gift of love and new life, together we say, I confess. And to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words and what I have done and what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault, therefore I ask the Blessed Mary, ever virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Today, the church is also remembering St. Stanislaus, who is a bishop and martyr from Poland. O oh God, for whose honor the bishop, St. Stanislaus, fell beneath the swords of his persecutors, grant, we pray, that we may persevere strong in faith even until death, through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit. God forever and ever. Amen. 
A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. When the court officers had brought the apostles in and made them stand before the Sanhedrin, the high priest questioned them. We gave you strict orders, did we not, to stop teaching in that name? Yet you have filled Jerusalem with your teachings, and I want to bring this man's blood upon us. But Peter and the apostles said in reply, We must obey God rather than men. The God of our ancestors raised Jesus, though you had him killed by hanging him on a tree. God exalted him at his right hand as our leader and savior to grant Israel repentance and forgiveness of, our, of sins. We are witnesses of these things, as is the Holy Spirit whom God has given to those who obey him. When they heard this, they became infuriated and wanted to put them to death. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The response will be, the Lord hears the cry of the poor. The Lord hears the cry of the poor. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall be ever in my mouth. Taste and see how good the Lord is. Blessed the man who takes refuge in him. The Lord <coughs> hears the cry of the poor. <coughs> the Lord confronts the evildoers to restore remembrance of them from the earth. When the just cry out, the Lord hears them. And from all their distress, he rescues them. The Lord hears the cry of the poor. The Lord is close to the brokenhearted, and those who are crushed in spirit he saves. Many are the troubles of the just man, but out of them all the Lord delivers him. The Lord hears the cry of the poor. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. The one who comes from above is above all. The one who is of earth is earthly and speaks of earthly things. But the one who comes from heaven is above all. He testifies to what he has seen and heard but no one accepts his testimony. Whoever does, not, whoever does accept his testimony certifies that God is trustworthy. For the one whom God sent speaks the words of God. He does not ration his gift of the Spirit. The Father loves the Son and has given everything over to him. Whoever believes in the Son has eternal life. But whoever disobeys the Son will not see life, but the wrath of God remains upon him. The Gospel of the Lord. So I'd like to hear from some of you, how was your Easter break? 
and what, what is special about Easter? So I know I'm asking two questions, but how is your Easter break? And what is special about Easter? What did you do during Easter? What's special? How, how is your break? I went to Mammoth. You went to Mammoth. Great. Wonderful. Did you have a lot of rest? Uh, yeah. Yeah? Okay, yeah. good. All right. How was your break? It was good. I went on a cruise. You went on a cruise. That sounds nice. Did you get relaxed? Yeah. yeah? Okay. How was your break? I went to Las Vegas. You went to Las Vegas. Awesome. Did you... You didn't go gambling, did you? Okay, good. <laughs> all right. How was your Easter break? I played Fortnite all day. You played Fortnite all day. Did you get any sleep? Mm, yeah. Yeah? <laughs> okay, that sounds fun. Yeah. I went miniature golfing. You went miniature golfing. Sounds like you guys had a good time, huh? All right. How was your break? How was your break? I went to San Diego. San Diego. Oh, that sounds nice. All right. How about over here? We got a hand over here. How was your break? Yeah. Fun. Fun? Yeah. <laughs> that sounds great. Mine was good, and it's important because Jesus is risen. It's important because Jesus is risen. That's great. What is, let's talk a little bit more about that. What does it mean that Jesus is risen? What are we celebrating in Easter? What do you guys think? The ascension? The ascension, yeah. Jesus can ascend to the Father because he's raised from the dead, right? That's great. All right, how about, what's important about Easter? What are we celebrating? What's, what's it mean for you? What does Easter mean for you? Of the, Lenten, of, the, of the Lenten journey. Yeah, we've, we've finished our Lenten journey. The resurrection of Jesus. The resurrection of Jesus. Is that what you were going to say? Yeah. The resurrection, yes. Life eternal. Life eternal. Very good. Yeah. We come all the way back here. All right. New life. New life. Yeah. Love. Love. That's great. Maybe a couple more on this side. What does Easter mean to you? What happens at Easter and what does Easter mean to you? How about way back here? Jesus rose from the dead. Jesus rose from the dead. Very good. How about back here? Holy Week. Holy Week. Yeah, that's right. We have a whole week getting ready for, for Easter, huh? A lot of preparations. Very good. Uh, Jesus died, and in three days he rose from the dead. Jesus died, and then in three days he rose from the dead. Very good. He resurrected. He resurrected. Yeah, that's right. How about over here? Um, Jesus, Jesus woke from the dead. Jesus rose from the dead. That's very good. Over here. Jesus has blood. Jesus helps us. That's excellent. Maybe one more. What does it mean for Easter and what do we celebrate? I went on Japan on Easter. You went to Japan. Oh, that's great. And one one more over here. You uh, I love Jesus. You love Jesus. Oh, so good. So this is, this is great. All of these trips that we're, we're taking, we're celebrating, we're having some time to rest and to play and visit family and friends and maybe go on some trips. And we're doing that because we have a little bit of space because of, of Easter. And Jesus resurrected from the dead. He has this, this new life, so he gives us eternal life. He gives us a chance to live our lives without fear. Sometimes we're afraid and Jesus wants to free us from the things that hold us down. They tie us up. They bind us because we're afraid of, of death or afraid of what somebody might say. And that's what we heard in the scriptures today. That's what we're celebrating with St. Stanislaus. So St. Stanislaus, he was a bishop in 
Poland, that's where Pope John Paul II is from. He was from the same city, Krakow. And so then, but this was about a thousand years ago. So he was a bishop before Pope St. John Paul was there. But the king of Poland was, was kind of doing some things that weren't really good, right? He's kind of doing some things that weren't too nice. And so the bishop was, was trying to help people know what's right and what's wrong. And the king was giving a bad example. And so he stood up to the king. He says, no, this isn't what God says. Do we have that first slide? Maybe you can find the first slide on the projection. It says something about, it's from the first reading. Maybe we can go to the first reading. It says about what's, that, that's it. Obey God rather than men. Right? So when, and that's what was happening in in the first reading as well. The apostles, they were sharing about the resurrection. They were sharing about Jesus and how much Jesus loves everybody and how he rose from the dead and we don't have to be afraid anymore. And the, the church leaders at that time were really upset. They said, Stop talking about Jesus. We already hung him on the tree, he died. Let him stay dead. Let him be silent. We don't want to hear about him anymore. And the apostles, Peter and the twelve, they said, no. We have to obey God rather than what you say. Even though they were threatening them, they said, no, we can't do anything but share the good news of God. Share the love of God. So, in our own lives, sometimes people may, it might be friends or it might be things that we hear on, on TV or social media, right, or in the movies or in music. Sometimes the world is going to tell us something against God. So who do we listen to when we hear those different messages? Who do you think? We listen to God? Yeah, are you sure? Yeah, we should listen to God, right? We should listen to our parents because our parents and our teachers and your priests and sisters, they help you to understand what God teaches, right? But sometimes it could be really convincing, right? So what if somebody says, did everybody watch, you guys watched the eclipse the other day, right? Did you protect your eyes? Good, good. Did you see the, the sun get dark? Awesome. It's amazing, isn't it? The world's amazing, right? So what if somebody says, somebody tells you, we know where the sun is, right? We can kind of see it out here. Everybody knows what the sun is, right? Yeah? What if I told you that the sun is actually the moon? What would you say? No? No? Are you sure? What if I tried to tell you again and again, no, this, that's the moon. You're wrong. That's, that's not the sun. It's the moon. Would you, what would you say? Are you sure? Okay. What if I tried to tell you, if you go outside at night and you see the moon, I say, no, that's the sun. You say, what would you say? You say, Father Ethan, you're being silly. That's the sun. The sun outside, that's the sun. The moon is the moon. The sun is the sun, right? What if I told you to go play in the middle of the street and it's okay, nothing's going to happen to you? Why not? It's fun. You can go take your toys, go play right in the intersection. It'll be okay. No? Okay, all right, all right. Yeah, don't go play in the street, okay? You guys know better than that. That's just being silly, right? But there's lots of things like that. Sometimes the world can be crazy and start to tell us crazy things, right? But you guys know what's right and what's wrong, don't you? Yeah. And you know what God teaches is good and what's bad, right? Right? And if you're confused, because sometimes the world can be confusing a little bit. Sometimes we hear things on social media or, like we were saying, on the music or TV. Sometimes it can be confusing. So that's why you have your teachers. That's why you have your parents. You can come talk to your priest or your sisters, the religious sisters, right? And we're there to help guide you to make sure that you are making the right choices and that you're listening to the right voices because we should obey God 
rather than what the world teaches us. Because sometimes the world gets confused and it's going to tell us something wrong. Okay? And so then, even if it seems like sometimes there's bullies, we know about bullies, right? Sometimes there's bullies in the world. And the bullies are going to start to say, you better do what I tell you. Go play in the middle of the street. No, that's going to hurt me. It's dangerous. I'm not going to go do that. I have to listen to my parents. I have to listen to God. And I have to do what's right. So you don't have to be afraid to do what's right. You don't have to be afraid to listen to God because God loves you. Jesus loves you. That's what Easter is all about. The resurrection. He's giving us a new life. He's giving us a freedom to continue to follow God and to live in his love. Okay? So today we can all say, yes, God, I want to live with you. I want to live for you. I want to live in your truth and in your love. Amen? Amen. So we can all stand. And by his resurrection, Christ has triumphed over sin and death. We approach the Father with great confidence and love. Our response will be, Lord, hear our prayer. That the church of God gathered in Easter joy this day will be renewed through the saving death and resurrection of Christ. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. <laughs> that all the nations of the world may experience hope and peace in Christ. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all of us gathered here, May each of us give testimony of the risen Lord in our homes, communities, and throughout the world. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the special intentions of Rosina Piccini on her birthday, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who are sick, especially for Gonzalo Farfan, and Austin Morris. May the risen Christ heal their wounds and illnesses. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have died in the hope of the resurrection and eternal life, especially for Rita Mata, Linda Nemec, Elisa Farfan, and Anna de la Ripa Bustos, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayers. Let us pause for a moment and just think of somebody in our lives who might need a prayer, or maybe we have a special need in our own lives. We have a special intention. For all of these prayers, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, you have already granted us more than we can ask for in the resurrection of Christ. As you answer our prayers, make us ever more faithful to him who is Lord forever and ever. Amen.
Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. O God, for whose honor the bishop, St. Stanislaus, fell beneath the swords of his persecutors, we pray that we may continue to be filled with his life and his love through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but at this time above all to laud you yet more gloriously when Christ, our Passover, has been sacrificed. Through him the children of light rise to eternal life and the halls of the heavenly kingdom are thrown open to the faithful for his death is our ransom from death and in his rising the life of all has risen therefore overcome with paschal joy every land every people exalts in your praise and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts Sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks. He gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim the death of God and profess your resurrection until you come again. Until you come again. 
Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Jose, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with dear Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, with Saint Stanislaus, with Saint Paul Montal, Saint John Eudes, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit. All glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. But lead us not into Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer to each other the sign of peace.
Behold the Lamb, the truth of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb.
Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, who restore us to eternal life in the resurrection of Christ, increase in us, we pray, the fruits of this paschal sacrament and pour into our hearts the strength of this saving food through Christ our Lord. So thank you all for being here today. I want to thank our choir. You guys are awesome. Thank you. Thank you. We thank our AV, our tech team. Great job, you guys. Awesome. We thank our altar servers. Thank you. Thank you. And we thank fifth grade for hosting us today. Thank you, guys. Great job. Great job reading and being present. And thank all of you for being present and for participating and for living the resurrection. Jesus is resurrected. He wants to live in our hearts and he wants to continue to share his love with us. And so the more that we say yes to God and we keep obeying him and following him, the more his life grows. And so we ask our Blessed Mother Mary. She knows Jesus better than anybody. We ask our Blessed Mother Mary to help us to know her son Jesus and to grow in our relationship with him. As we say, Hail Mary. Blessed art thou among women. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us. The Lord be with you. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life.